Hey, everybody. Welcome to Take Off with John Clark, presented by Live Casino Hotel Philadelphia, and it is Dallas week. Eagles, Cowboys, it doesn't get any better than this. Eagles can clinch a lot of things if they can win on Christmas Eve. Let's bring in a guy who knows all about going to Dallas on Christmas. Of course, it's a thing of legend. He said, Merry Christmas, Philadelphia, after the Eagles beat the Cowboys. Jeff Garcia, thanks for taking the time with us. You got it, John. How's everybody doing out there in Philadelphia? I mean, come on, Jeff. You see this Eagle season. Every, the city's on fire. The city's on fire. Yes, absolutely. And and they should be. I mean, it's been such an awesome, awesome season so far. And just everything that they've brought together as a team. I mean, they're just so exciting to watch. Offense, defense, special teams. Every aspect of the game seems to be clicking on all cylinders so it's great to see that and uh you know hopefully they can stay healthy over these next few weeks and finish off strong and hey host host the nfc playoffs right there at home in that great stadium and those great fans i could tell you're getting a little fired up thinking about it and when <laughs> when you when you hear this week that the eagles are going to dallas to face the cowboys a lot on the line christmas eve did it bring back some memories? Did you start to think of how you went down there 16 years ago? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's always been such a great rivalry, first of all, and to be a part of that, uh, being able to go out there in Dallas, knowing what that game, uh, the magnitude of that game. You know, we were on a little bit of a streak. We had won three great three games and uh, we were scratching our clawing our way back into the NFC East division. And, uh, you know, that game was a, a significant one for us in the sense of what it meant to our season at that time. And, you know, with two games left in the season and where we were at at that point, I believe we were eight and six. And uh, we really put ourselves in a position to to compete for the NFC East division title, which at one point when Donovan went down against Tennessee, I don't think anybody would have thought that we would be in that position at that time. And that was just a special Monday afternoon game. I remember on that day, it was Christmas day. They had two Monday games. We were the early game and then there was a Monday night game. And that's really unique to the NFL to play two games on Monday and especially it being Christmas Day and uh, you know we went out to Dallas we were confident we were playing good football it was our third game on the road versus the NFC East division which which was unheard of when do you ever play three games in a row on the road first of all secondly all against your division rivals your division opponents and you know we kicked it off with going to Washington and taking it to them and then we went to New York on a Sunday night game and put it on them. And, you know, the, the cards were just stacking up the right way for us at that time. So when did you start to feel it inside after you pulled off the big win in Dallas that you wanted to say, Merry Christmas, Philadelphia? <laughs> well, I mean, they had me there after the game doing the interview with the sideline reporter. I forget who it was, uh, the woman that was asking questions. And I believe it was Dawkins and I that may have been there for the interview and it was Christmas day. So why not? Hey, it was a great day for us going into Dallas, ruining their Christmas and uh, bringing a nice Christmas present home to the people of Philadelphia who were all at home enjoying their great Christmas day meal and a great game to, to watch us kick the tails out of uh, Dallas. So, so how soon when you got into Philadelphia and joined the Eagles, did you realize how big the rivalry is and how much they savor, savor a win over the Cowboys every year? Well, we saw it earlier that season when we played Dallas at home. I, you know, just looking at the NFC East, it's just such a unique division. There's such a big rivalry amongst all those teams. I mean, you look at the Redskins and the Giants, which – we, we traveled to both on ground. I mean, they're that close. And uh, you see the following that Eagles fans have throughout the country. I mean, I've played for different teams. We played Philadelphia, 
they always have great support wherever they go on the road. But just uh, knowing a lot about the divisions within the NFL, having played in the NFC West, having played in the AFC North, at that point, going to Philadelphia and getting to be a part of that NFC East division was a special thing. I felt like this is probably at the time the most competitive division in the National Football League, just like it is again this year yeah. with potentially four teams, all the teams being in a position to make the playoffs. I mean, that's kind of how it was back then as well. And uh, I know that we had some some tough games that we were going to play on the road, but I almost was looking forward to playing those games on the road, going to Washington, going to New York, going to Dallas. And just, you know, the pressure is different when you're on the road. You know that, the hey, the, the fans, the team, everything's kind of stacked up against you, but that's the thrill of it, to be able to go prove that you're going to take their, their land away, so to speak. And uh, when you're at home, especially in front of those Philly fans, if things aren't going well, they're going to let you know, you know, and uh, I think in many ways I was fortunate to not have to experience that negativity, so to speak. I know it's just part of the game. Hey, the fans are, are, are rabid about the team. It's uh, there's an energy in that stadium. There's an energy in that city for the Eagles. That's just, that's just not, not the same in other cities. I mean, it's a very unique feeling when you play for the Eagles and to be able to go out there on Christmas day in Dallas against the much hated Cowboys. I mean, playing for the 49ers, we hate the Cowboys as well, you know? And so, I, I mean, it's just like, I think no matter where you're playing in the NFL, if you're not playing in Dallas, you're hating the Cowboys. It just is what it is. But seeing it firsthand, with the Eagle fans, the Eagle fans that had traveled to that game. Uh, you know, I, I just, it just came to me at that point. I was excited. I was fired up for our team. We were back in the playoff hunt and uh, you know, it was a great Christmas day for all of us. Did you get a sense that your popularity in Philadelphia rose when you said Merry Christmas, Philadelphia, and the fact that you're able to <laughs> beat the Cowboys and then get the team into the playoffs? I mean, how much did you get a sense that the team really bonded with you over that moment? Well, I really felt like there was a chemistry amongst my teammates, a bond that was very special at that point with what we had done the previous three weeks, a big Monday night win over Carolina, uh, the games against Washington on the road and New York on the road. I mean, we started to really gel as a team and and I think really raised the level of expectation amongst all of us and uh, you know I think oftentimes when Donovan was the quarterback I think his teammates were relying on Donovan to just make a play and it wasn't that they weren't trying as hard or anything like that but I felt like when I stepped onto the field it just created a little bit different energy a little bit different synergy amongst the team and the expectation and what everybody needed to expect out of themselves, the accountability of showing up and doing your work and getting your film study in and being prepared for those games on Sunday or Monday. And, uh, you know, it, it was a special feeling. I think Andy Reed, coach Reed and, and the whole staff really, um, really, uh, I think embraced me, as the quarterback, especially after that Carolina and Washington game with what I was able to do to step out there and help that team win those games. I mean, we had a tough start when I took over as a starter. My first start was in Indianapolis and that was, that was a rough one against what would be the Super Bowl champions that year. But, you know, we went out there and didn't play very well. And so the expectation I know amongst fans being five and six coming back home on a Monday night game against Carolina, uh, the impact, they're, they're, the patience had run out and, uh, you know, they weren't going to settle for anything but a win. And when we were able to, hey, lock down five or six consecutive wins, finish off that season 10 and six, I mean, it was a special moment for me as well as our team. And, and, and really, you know, as much as when I said that, it was just like a moment. And I just I did, wasn't even thinking about it, but I knew, hey, it's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, Philadelphia. I know the fans just appreciated that I was thinking about them. 
um, that I was put my heart and soul out on the line for them. And uh, I think they really, uh, they embraced me as well. And it was a great feeling to know that these Eagle fans who can be tough, believe me, I've played against the Eagles and I've had them not like me, but uh, to have them like me the way that they did, to have me embrace embrace me the way that they did, I, it was a tremendous feeling. My family, my parents, everybody who experienced it with me just loved it. So you've got Gardner Minshew, it looks like, Kind of a very similar situation to you going into Dallas as the backup quarterback. They're also trying to win three straight games on the road here, and they've got a lot they can clinch home field throughout the division. Give me an idea of what you think is going through Gardner Minshew's mind as the backup quarterback in a similar spot as you in such a huge game. Everybody's watching Eagles Cowboys. Well, just like me going to Philadelphia as a backup to Donovan, who was a great player, I didn't look at myself as a backup. I was a starting quarterback. I'd been a starting quarterback in the National Football League for six, seven years at that point. And Gardner's the same. Gardner's a starting quarterback. They're fortunate to have such a quality player serving as a number two. He's actually one of my son's favorite players because Jacksonville happens to be a team that he he loves and he loved Gardner Minshew there. And when they um, got rid of him a couple years ago, that was a big score for Philadelphia because here's a guy who's scrappy. He's a grinder. He just makes plays. He knows how to win. He knows how to get his players, his teammates involved. He makes good decisions. He's a smart, uh, crafty young player. And, and I think he'll be just fine stepping onto the field, knowing that he's got such great weapons to his advantage, first of all, he has a great offensive line in front of him. Secondly, he's got some of the best receivers in the National Football League playing for him and a damn good running game behind him and a defense that's going to create uh, turnovers. They're going to create opportunities and uh, field advantage opportunities. And so Gardner's been in this place before. He's stepped in as a backup before, and he's been successful. He's been a starter and was successful for a team that really has struggled for most of their most of their time in the National Football League. And, uh, you know, I think he's he is a lot like me, I think, in ways, just in how he approaches the game and how he plays the game. And he plays the game as a – he's tough. He's a tough kid, and I, I love, love, love his style. That's great. And, and maybe he'll uh... – Wish Philadelphia Merry Christmas and, and get another Christmas gift for Philly like you did. It's interesting because if the Eagles possibly clinch with Gardner at quarterback, we may not see Jalen Hurts for over a month before a home playoff game. Does that worry you at all that maybe he wouldn't get into action and, and, and be out that long? Because Nick has rested his guys in the past once they clinch or don't have something to play for. And I don't like that, to be honest with you. I've been a part of that situation when I was in Tampa in 2007, the year after I left Philadelphia. And, hey, we turned their team around in that one season and we clinched the division with uh, two games remaining. We went out to San Francisco and play, we were playing the Niners and uh, John Gruden had the starters go for the first half. We were winning the game. I had thrown for 200 yards and two touchdowns in the first half of the game alone. And then he pulled a bunch of us at halftime. We end up losing that game. Then we come home to play Carolina, who was struggling all season long, starting Vinny Testaverde at quarterback. We were 5-0 and in the division, and I believe we were 7-0 and at home, if I'm not mistaken. And we rested 12 starters, including myself. We didn't even suit up for the game. We lost that game. We went into the playoffs having lost three of our last four games, having the starters playing basically a half in the last two games. We, we lost our chemistry. We lost our everything. We played the New York Giants in the wild card game at home. Now, it's the year that the Giants won the Super Bowl, but still, we weren't the same team at that point because – we had pulled back the reins. We had taken our, our, our foot off the pedal. And, and so I don't like that. I think, you hey, you got to play. You got to have that 
that chemistry on the field, you're, you're, when your, your mind tells your body to shut down and take a break in football, it's hard to get it back. Your body just naturally starts to shut down. It, it feels like it's, it's done for the season. And I didn't, I did not like that. I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to keep balling. I wanted to keep competing and battling. Maybe he rests this week and maybe the next week. But I think, you know, going into the playoffs, he's got to play in those last, in that last game or play at least a half in each of the last two games, just so he keeps his own preparation going at a high level. What has impressed you the most with Jalen Hurts this year? And do you think, with the sprained shoulder now, it's not considered a serious injury, but do you think that will affect his MVP candidacy and the Eagles' possible Super Bowl run? No, I think he's fine. I think they're just being cautious. I think he'll be plenty ready to go and to be able to make every throw that he needs to make. There's something that's called adrenaline that kicks in that makes us not think about certain things that are going wrong with our body. We just power through it. I believe that he'll do that. He'll do the same. He's what he's shown to me is just such a great leader. He takes it very seriously. He's all work and business out there on the field. He's not, I mean, you see him laugh, you see him smile when the game's in the bag and secure, but he's out there to work and to eat and to be the best that he can be. I love his craftiness, say the guy can make plays inside and outside the pocket, but he's really proving to be a great, great quarterback in so many ways, just with decision-making, with accuracy, with how he gets his teammates involved, how he takes advantage of matchup opportunities on the field and gives his guys opportunities to make plays. I don't think that his MVP status potentially should be uh, hurt by not playing in a game or two at the end of the season. I think he's shown and proven to everybody in the National Football League that he has been consistent week in and week out. His team has the best record in the National Football League. Uh, he's the reason why. He's the gunslinger out there pulling the trigger, leading the team. And uh, that he's deserving of that award. He's uh, He's done everything within his power to – to statistically prove that he's worthy of it. You had good mobility. You could run, man. When you, when you see Jalen on, on the option or zone read, um, you know, he gets hurt. Lyman comes down with all his weight on him. Uh, the other time he got hurt last year, he was in the pocket. But do you worry? And how do you, like, keep that in your mind as a quarterback? Okay. I can go get these yards, but I do have to make sure that I'm going to be there for my team and, and not get hurt. Yeah, I think there's something to be said about just decision making when it comes down to know that, hey, the end of the road is here as far as a run is concerned. Do I need to take on this hit? Is it necessary? Am I trying to get a first down? Am I trying to get a touchdown? Or am I going to save my body for my team? And I think, you know, I get it. I was not a guy who slid. As a matter of fact, the one time I think I did slide, it was very awkward to me. It was uncomfortable. I think I like hurt my hip when I did it. You know, I'd been out of sliding. I hadn't played baseball in 20 plus years. And so, you know, I just was, that wasn't what I did. I would always dive and I would always kind of find a little space and kind of get low and and kind of dive through it. And, um, you know, I think there's something to be said though, for being smart, like, Hey, you are valuable to this team and just making sure that, Hey, if you're near the sideline, Hey, go ahead and step out of bounds. I get it. If it's third and a short yard that you're trying to get to convert the first down and make the chains move or get in the end zone, that's a different mentality. And he's got a great mindset as far as that's concerned but I think there are times when you got to pick and choose your poison and uh, those guys are flying around fast they're big they're coming with steam and energy and and force and uh, they can cause an impact and so be careful about what you what you're open you're opening yourself up to and I, I think he'll he'll realize he realizes that and that's something that he'll be better about moving forward 
couple final questions for you. You watch the NFL. You played for the Niners. You know what it's like to play at the link if the Eagles get the home field throughout. Is there anybody you think that is the biggest threat or the biggest concern for the Eagles? I think it would be the 49ers. I think when you look at a team that plays good defensive football, uh, that would be a team that could compete with just about anybody in the National Football League. Now, the weapons that Philadelphia has, and it's much like playing against Kansas City and Mahomes. And when they faced Kansas City six weeks ago, Kansas City annihilated the 49ers. Now, maybe they learned a lesson in that game and uh, they'll be better prepared to to face a team like Philly because of that experience. But it'll be a tough match for anybody to come into Philadelphia and take that away from them. They are very talented. They're good on both sides of the football. Um, they're going to create opportunities for their their team, whether it's defensively forcing turnovers or field position change because of three and outs or offensively because of the weapons that they can strike instantly down the field. They can pick and pick you apart if they want to. I mean, they can do it so many ways and the quarterback has legs to be able to extend and to create himself. So, you know, it would be a tough matchup, but I think if there's one team in the NFC that can challenge them in any sort of way or potentially give them a competitive football game in Philadelphia, it, it could be the Niners. They have some balance. They have some weapons themselves on offense. They spread the ball around. They have a good tight end. They should have Debo back. They have a, a great shifty little young running back now in McCaffrey. And, you know, they have some guys. They have some players that can be difference makers. And so it'd be a, a very similar opponent in what Philly would face in San Francisco as San Francisco is facing in Philly. Now, the biggest question is the quarterback situation. This young kid has played well, and will he continue to succeed, or or does Jimmy come back and he gets the position again? That's just yet to be determined over these last three weeks. Yeah, they're saying Jimmy Garoppolo has a chance if the Niners get far. So I'm sure when you saw Nick Foles as the backup quarterback win the Super Bowl, did you feel a little of that? Because there is a phenomenon in Philadelphia with the backup quarterbacks because you had A.J. Feely, then we had you lead the team to the playoffs, and then Nick Foles wins a Super Bowl as a backup quarterback. Is that almost the way it happens in Philadelphia? Why do you think <laughs> there is that phenomenon that they fall in love with the backup quarterback in Philly? I think the backup is always the player's favorite in the sense that he oftentimes isn't out on the field to expose why he's the backup now. <laughs> Philadelphia has been pretty fortunate that they've had some quality backups and Nick Foles was not a guy that was new to the scene as far as being a starter. He had started many games in his career at that point and, uh, you know, was able to step into a situation that was, was very positive uh, with the team and how the team was built. And uh, he was able to come in there and, and granted, Hey, he played, his tail off. And especially in that Super Bowl, he made some throws that were just, just uh, excellent, excellent decisions and throws the accuracy that came through with him. I was with Nick in St. Louis in 2015 when he was the starting quarterback there. And I was there as an assistant coach and believe me, he was not that guy that was playing for Philadelphia and you know, and that goes to show what the system can do for you, how it can help having a head coach who was a former quarterback himself in preparing things for you. And then obviously the tools that you have at your disposal. And he had a pretty darn good football team around him, but he did an excellent job when he stepped in. And, you know, I mean, I think that's going to be something that Gardner is going to take advantage of this weekend because Gardner is playing for an opportunity to be a starter back in this league again and he's capable of being that guy and this is his opportunity to show that he's deserving that he can handle it that he can be productive and hey why not do it against the cowboys on christmas eve and and hey you have the best best team in the national football league on your side so he's got some pretty good things going for himself by the way i did hear you say 
a system can help you. What did you think of Micah Parsons' comments where he kind of said, MVP Jalen Hurts, is he really the MVP? He said system and team might be the most important thing. What did you think of what he said there? Well, system and team is the most important thing whenever you're winning football games and whenever you have one guy or a handful of guys that are standing out, it's because they're doing a lot of great things on the field and they put in a great system in Philly. Uh, They have great players, great weapons. Uh, Jalen is utilizing all of that to his to his best, to his advantage. And that's what great players do. They take advantage of the people. Uh, Look at Peyton Manning, what he had to throw to in Indianapolis. I mean, he had two Hall of Fame receivers plus a Hall of Fame running back at one time in Marshall Falk who went on, but he had good players, a heck of a center in Jeff Saturday. I mean, the guy had a great team around him. Was anybody saying, well, It's part of the system. No, he took advantage of it. And that's what Jalen is doing. You're putting your quarterback in the best position to be successful. He's taking advantage of it. So Micah Parsons, hey, he's taking advantage of being a part of uh, the Dallas defense that puts him in a position to be successful as well, moves him all over the field and utilizes his talent, his abilities. Um, You know, he's part of the system too. And he has guys that are helping him. So Nobody does it alone in the National Football League. You need 10 guys on your side, all accountable to their job, to their position, listening to what they're being coached to do, and then taking it onto the field and making it happen. To wrap this up, you've played in a lot of good rivalry games in your career. Is Eagles-Cowboys the best rivalry in the NFL? It's probably definitely one of the best rivalries. I mean, as far as what I've been able to experience in the National Football League, you know, playing in San Francisco, the big rivalry was also Dallas or Green Bay because of so many great playoff matchups they had against those two teams through the 80s and 90s. But being a part of a division like the NFC East, where every team really is a hated, rival and to see the Cowboys Eagles experience to witness it to be a part of it it's definitely one of the best if not the best in the National Football League all right well it's going to be a good one this weekend you want to give a Merry Christmas to Philadelphia again here absolutely hey Philadelphia I miss you I love you Merry Christmas Philadelphia this is great I tell you what we're reliving that and then it looks like Hopefully the Eagles can have a similar experience this weekend. I I really appreciate the time because this was fun catching up and it's an amazing parallel now brings us back to that great memory. So uh, we wish you the best and everything that you're doing. It's great to catch up with you. Thank you. You too, John. And I'm still your babe. I'm still your babe. (laughs) (laughs) You remember that, huh? Of course. How can you not (laughs) remember that one? I mean, I still get videos sent to me of him and just like the chaos and craziness. And it's just, uh, it's hilarious to, to see. That's awesome. There's nothing like Philly. Am I right? Right. You're right about that. And I'll be there for a game one day soon. There you go. That's a promise. All right. Well, hopefully there'll be a couple at the link. Opioid addiction is a national public health crisis. The someone, you know, podcast from the independence blue cross foundation, offers inspiring stories that challenge stigma, offer hope, and humanizes the disease of addiction. So download the new season three of Someone You Know on all major podcast platforms. All right, and right now, let's bring in from Prime Video's Thursday Night Football, one of the great offensive linemen we have seen. He is a defending Super Bowl champ, won the Super Bowl in his final game. Andrew Whitworth, appreciate you joining us. Hey, I appreciate it. Glad to be here. All right, and I hate to bring this up, very first question with you, but it just happened, so this is historic. Lane Johnson has broken your record. He is now at 27 games without giving up a sack, and I believe it's like, what is it, like 928 pass plays without giving up a sack. He passes you. Are you happy to pass that off to Lane, or is it kind of upset you? No, I'm happy to pass that off. Lane's a tremendous player, a good friend, uh, somebody I've followed throughout my career, and, and uh, we've 
we've had plenty of time catching up and man, I couldn't be happier for him. I was kind of texting him on the side throughout the process and, you know, let the old man have his moment, but uh, he still passed me up and you know what, that guy, man, he's unbelievable. He could probably, even when he does finally give up one, he'll probably go on the same streak again because uh, he could play forever. Is he the best right tackle in football? Oh, there's no question to me. He's the best right tackle in football and uh, somebody who's not only a great player, but he's he's a big part of that offense and a big part of their success with his leadership and uh, the way he loves to play this game. When you look at the Eagles and you see that one game they can rush for close to 380 yards, then the next game they could sling it for like 400 yards through the air. Is this the best offensive line in football here in Philly? I think it is. I mean, I, you hear a lot of people say that. And, and to me, it's one of those things you can never – you know, uh, overstate, you know, obviously Jalen Hurts has played great. He's been unbelievable this year. They got a lot of awesome talent, uh, you know, at the skill positions. But can you ever just really talk enough about the job that this offensive line's done and and really how important it is to this team? With Kelsey and Lane Johnson, leaders who have played at a really high level for a long time, have been in the big moments, know how to win in the month of December, know how to win playoff games and get to the big one and win it. Um, I think what a great example that that young talent has around them to be able to lean on in moments like this is that this offensive line and their leaders, especially up front, are going to be huge in this next stretch of the season and how they find ways to keep winning and get themselves to that Super Bowl. We've enjoyed watching you on Prime Video Thursday Night Football. You had the Eagles, Texans. You're going to have the Cowboys next week in Philly right now. That's all we're talking about is Eagles, Cowboys. But, of course, Jalen Hurts sprained his shoulder and I'm guessing Gardner Minshew is going to start because they got to rest him and heal him up. In your opinion, I mean, I know if it's a playoff game, Jalen Hurts is probably playing. But in your opinion, can the Eagles still go to Dallas and beat the Cowboys with Gardner? I think you got the skill positions to be able to do it in the offensive line, obviously, and defensively how they've played this year. I think the key is going to be exactly what Jalen Hurts has done so well. And that's taking care of the football I mean, that's been a big part of their success that you don't talk about enough, you think, is that, you know what, all the yards they put up as well as they've played on both sides of the football, but that ability to not give it back to the other team is something that's made them really rare and really special this year. And if he can do that, then they'll have a chance to do it. I think it's interesting, too, that the last time these two teams played, it was Cooper Rush for the Cowboys. So, you know what, now it's Philly's turn. Like, do we take our backup down there and we'll show you that we're still that much better than you. We can beat you even in a scenario where you claimed if you just had Dak, y'all would have had a chance to beat us. We can come down there with our backup and still win. I think it's a fun narrative for the Eagles to have. With Jalen having the sprained shoulder, does that change in any way your opinion about them and their chance at being in the Super Bowl or his MVP race with Patrick Mahomes and and maybe Joe Burrow and guys like that? You know, I think it's the Eagles really got to be smart. I think this is going to come down to maybe not how Jalen feels as much as what the organization thinks is in the best interest of the team and him going forward because you really have the opportunity to still lock a lot of the things you want up regardless of how this game goes this week. It doesn't actually mean that much to your season. So if he's not feeling great, we know that to have the success and the dynamic ability that this offense has had all year, you got to have him as part of the running game. I mean, that's been a part of who they are this year and their identity, but you don't want him getting banged up. So why not give him a chance to say, hey, let's stay off of it. Let's let's keep the shoulder healthy, get you back to feeling great, because in the playoffs, we're really going to need you and your ability to run as that dynamic part of our offense that adds a whole other level defenses have to prepare for or do we are we that worried about just winning this game? So it's a huge decision, and I think for him it's unfortunate. What a great year, unbelievable season uh, to not you know have some reason that he wouldn't be the MVP. But I think I still think he's going to find a way to get it because it would be unprecedented to have the success he's had, play the way he's played, and be on a team that's this good and not win the MVP award. Uh, I, I just think somehow, some way, he's still going to be that guy. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, obviously, five years ago, Carson Wentz went down with a torn ACL right there in a uh, L.A., and then he wasn't going to play again the rest of the year, so he didn't get MVP. But you're thinking at this point, 13-1 and one Eagles, that even if Jalen doesn't play the rest of the regular season, he would be your MVP? I mean, I think the way he's played and how he's dictated the success they've had, what they've been able to do offensively, to your point, I mean, the ability to rush the way they have and him being a huge part of that and then turn around the next week and throw it and, 
and you know be as explosive as they can be in both phases of the game. And then really that turnover differential. I mean, the way that he is able to take care of the football for his team, really only one game that you jump out there and say, hey, this has been a big, you know, we've had kind of a game like that where he turned it over. I, I just think that for him, like that kind of year, it's just throughout history, it's been, man, that guy wins the MVP when you're on that good of a team and you've played that well. I, I think he still has a chance to win this thing because the other two guys, I mean, Mahomes and Burrow, still have some tough games on their schedule. And then also, I just don't know if they've dominated to the level. Obviously, Mahomes is who he is, and Burrow's had a great year. That that Jalen Hurts' team and how he's led them, they've been really dominant this year. And so I think that people are going to keep that in mind when they're voting. And you touched on it, and that's kind of a big dilemma here in Philadelphia right now. Everybody's talking about, you see Jalen get hurt on a zone read. Now, last year, he hurt his ankle in the pocket. So that can be pushed out of the way. That's going to happen. But a lot of people are saying, hey, don't put him in harm's way as much as the Eagles have. I think he's been hit more than any quarterback in the NFL. I think he's run more than any quarterback, maybe except for Justin Fields. So do you keep doing those zone reads with Jalen because of what it does to a defense and because it takes your offense to the next level, an explosive level? Well, I think we heard, you know, people have chatter about that, about even Debo Samuel with the Niners, right? And the ability like they have to, I think it makes them who they are though. So, you know, it's like, hey, we can't just criticize the moments they actually get hurt. When we and we not realize, like, wow, what puts defenses in such a tough position is Debo Samuel's ability to get the ball in so many different ways. What puts defenses in a tough position with the Philadelphia Eagles and why you might have success throwing the football like you have is because they're spending an entire week worrying about the quarterback running the football. And that's what makes it so challenging. And now if you take that out of the offense, okay, well, defenses are going to play you a little differently. And maybe you're not going to have as much success just running normal run plays. And also in the passing game, they're going to be able to play more coverage and not worry about the quarterback spy so much. So I think you, you have to weigh like, hey, is this really who we are and our dynamic that makes us successful? And what do we think is the most important thing? Can you cut it down some? I mean, sure you can, but you still got to have it in the offense because it's what makes you so dynamic. You're going to have the Cowboys and Titans next week on Thursday Night Football Prime Video. You were with Jalen Hurts, and I think you had Jason Kelsey uh, on the set as well. Uh, what do you think about Jalen Hurts at 24 years of age, the leaps that he made this year, and just his poise, his calmness at the age of 24? You know, I think it's been really special. When we did that game, I have some close friends there that used to be on the strength staff in LA and now are, are there with the Eagles, uh, you know, Ted Rath and all his crew. And so uh, I got a chance to talk to some of those guys. And I thought it was really neat to hear, you know, I just assumed from afar, you know, that it's Brandon Graham and Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson and Fletch and these guys that, you know, are just who they're leaning on for everything. And to hear them say, no, man, it's not just them. Like this quarterback, not only is he having a great year, he's one of the guys on the day-to-day -day basis in our facility that his leadership, his work ethic, and who he is as a person is really who we are, and it's our, identi our identity. The way he approaches the game, how locked in and focused he is on a day out and day, day in basis. It's, it's interesting to see, because some of the greatest coaches I've ever been around, I always say one of the biggest things I, I take from them is their consistency in who they are and how they show up every day for their team in the building and whether it's consistent. And to see how he is every week, it's like he never flinches, no matter how much success they have. He's consistently that driven, focused player. Uh, I think it's really special to see a young player this young that in this league can be like that day in and day out. I think it gets really rare. Uh, and I look forward to watching the rest of his career. And it also tells you that it's no mistake that he's where he is because that's who he is as a person on a daily basis, regardless of his talent level. And I think the talent just makes it stick out that much more. And Lane Johnson has told me that, that Jalen is an old soul. He's listening to Anita Baker on the plane ride home. Oh, and it, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, his maturity. Would it concern you if, let's say the Eagles go to Dallas, Gardner Minshew is able to win. They've got it locked up, the number one seed. Would it concern you if we don't see Jalen Hurts back on the field for over a month when the Eagles host that divisional round of the playoffs? You know, I, you know, I think people can uh, kind of dissect that a bunch of different ways. I think for me, uh, the dynamic he has in his game to run the football and use his legs and, and then also the ability he has as a passer, 
I just think him fresh and ready to go is a lot of trouble for defenses because the hardest thing in defensive football is when all 11 have to be accounted for. And when you have to understand that the quarterback can be just as dynamic with his feet as he can with his arm, there's so much that goes into the plan, takes away a lot of the ability to double people and eliminate people in the skill positions because you got to have somebody for the quarterback if he runs, that it makes it so challenging. Him being fresh, having fresh legs, ready to go, I mean, we're talking about we're not talking about a guy who's going to take it easy. We're talking about a young player who probably my guess is if it's for a shoulder he's sitting out is going to hit so many workouts, so much study and so much focus that he would be locked in and ready to roll. And so I don't have any concern in that way for him. Obviously, I think if they're in a game where it's going to they're going to have to throw it a lot, not seeing it and feeling it can be a challenge, but him having fresh legs, I always feel good about that. All right, you are the defending Super Bowl champion with the Rams. Give me your pick, who you think is going to be the follow-up Super Bowl champ to follow you guys. You know, I think in the AFC, for me, it really comes down to Buffalo, Cincinnati, and Kansas City, and which uh, young, insanely talented quarterback is going to find a way to get his team there. And I think for me, I just keep going back to, although I hate to ever go against Mahomes, Josh Allen and Joe Burrow, in my opinion, probably have better complementary football teams in the sense that their defense can also help them win games as they've showed this season. So I think it's going to really come down to one of those two. I got a lot of faith. Maybe it's because I'm a homer, but you know what? Cincinnati, I just think they're going to find a way to get back there. And on the NFC side, I think it comes down to Philadelphia and San Francisco in the NFC Championship. A lot of talent all over the field. Great fronts on both sides, defensive and offensively. And I think it's going to be Jalen Hurts is just a little, he's just better than Brock Purdy. And that's just the bottom line. And so they get there and it's Eagles, Bengals in the Super Bowl. I guess you can't go against history. The Bengals haven't found a way to win it. I think the Eagles got as good a chance as anybody to be Super Bowl champions. Look at you. Philly's going to love to hear that. Before I let you go, do you have any great story from coming to Philadelphia, the link and Eagles fans, anybody come after you? Any funny stories about what you've heard from birds fans? No, I think it's just one of those things. You always enjoy going in there and hearing everybody tell you tell you everything about yourself and your mom while you're in pregame warm-ups and uh, where you can go. So it, it was always fun to go there, play on the road there, and enjoy the atmosphere, man. Just one of the places I enjoyed the most. So the saddest part of my career, though, is I played my last game there during the COVID year when no fans could be there. I was so disappointed because I always enjoyed those trips. You know, we were disappointed, too. That was the weirdest year. I appreciate your time, Andrew Whitworth, and uh, we look forward to seeing you maybe at an Eagles-Bengals Super Bowl because you'll have some ties to that, and we look forward to seeing you on the last couple weeks of uh, Prime Video Thursday Night Football. Thanks for taking the time with us. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Oh, I'm so flagrant.